It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is protecting yourself. And joining me is Bill Johnson, certified, board certified elder law attorney. Welcome, Bill. Hey, Joe. I'm glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here. Uh, this is, it's been a long, long taping day, but uh, it's, uh, it's always good to have a panelist that provides information to people that can help themselves, that help them help themselves. Well, that's what we try to do, is at least educate other people as to what they need to do to protect yeah. themselves. So the title of the show today is Protecting Oneself. And, but from a legal point, the first question is, how does somebody, from a legal viewpoint, how do you protect yourself? What do you well, do? I think we should back up a little further behind that. Okay. And talk about what is the problem? You know, what are we protecting ourselves from? And every day in my office, I see people who come in and, you know, they, they've got somebody with incapacity and, you know, somebody's trying to take their money or rip them off or uh, put them in a nursing home, something of that nature. And so one of the things we're looking to do is protect that person in the event that they lose capacity. Another thing we're looking to protect people from is such that their estate upon their death will pass the way they want it to. Okay. You know, we're looking at protecting it from not only estate taxes, but making sure it, it passes smoothly to the children. And then the third thing I see all the time and what we, we talk a lot about is um, protecting yourself from a long-term care event or the cost of a long-term care event. Right. Can't really protect yourself from the long-term care event. Those happen and they happen with quite you know, frequency, but we can uh, you know, protect ourselves from having that cost uh, wreak havoc on our uh, long-term care uh, finances. I had an interesting thing where um, I did a show with a reverse mortgage expert. And she told me what she had done with her own plan, and it made an awful lot of sense. Uh, it says she owned her home, and she said, how can I protect myself in a case of a, a long-term care event? So what she did was she used some of the equity in her home to purchase some kind of a thing that uh, would protect her and, and, and caring for a long-term uh, care event. But she, she, it wasn't cost her or anything. She had paid for her home. And so she was actually using her equity and her investment to help herself prepare. That's what I call good planning. Well, one of the ways you can protect yourself from a long-term care event is insurance. You defer the risk from yourself and place it on the insurance company. Now, as you uh, probably know, you know, long-term care insurance is uh, fairly expensive. But now the industry is kind of diversified, and you can buy uh, mixture products, right. which are a mixture of the insurance and maybe life insurance or uh, long-term care insurance and an annuity so that you, uh, you put some money into either uh, life insurance or annuity, and you can use that money in there to pay for your long-term care. Whatever's left over can go to your heirs. So if you don't that, use it, you don't lose it. That's the point. You, in a way, it's a little better planning than the plan that I have. I pay, I have a long-term care plan. I've been paying for it for years. I don't intend to cancel it. Uh, it's protection. I understand insurance. Insurance is a risk. My risk is that uh, was that I wanted to protect my wife. Right. So I don't want her to not be able to have what she needs in case something happens to me. So that's why I have long-term care insurance. But 
the, the, the truth is that uh, when I purchased my long-term care insurance, there were roughly 100 companies in the United States under a under policy. Now there are only 18. Correct. And they're all dropping out of the market very quickly because they can't get a grasp on the cost. They can't figure out what their exposure is to that market. Now, let's just back up to the issue of the house. You know, the house is an exempt asset when you're talking about Medicaid or VA benefits. So if you're looking to qualify for somebody in the Medicaid managed long term care program, or the VA aid and attendance program, the house doesn't count as an asset. Right. And in Florida, they can't take your house. So leveraging your house to buy one of these products may not be necessary or prudent investment if you otherwise are eligible for these other programs. Like, because you may be leveraging an asset you didn't need to leverage. Okay, I understand that. Okay. So, but at the same time I say that, there may be other benefits of not having uh, to rely on Medicaid or VA. For example, if you wanted to stay home, if you have some sort of insurance or insurance coupled with an annuity or life insurance, you know, you get ill, you need long-term care, you can activate that policy right. and get the care delivered to you at home. And you and me both know if you want Medicaid services at home, you get in line. There's a 58,000 people, I believe, on the waiting list. The for... number, I've heard it anywhere from 45,000 to 65,000. Mox Nix, mm -hmm. 45,000 people is a heck of a lot of people. Right. But the thing is that most viewers don't know is that if there are 45,000 people on that waiting list, some are five, some are four, some are three, some are two, some are ones, as based on need. Need. So that and, list is organized right. on need, the neediest at the top, least needy at the bottom, and then they work their way through that list. Starting at the fives. Correct. So if you're a four and somebody's adjudicated a five, they move ahead of it. You back down the list. Right. So this is why when people call us for help, we tell them, if you even think that you're going to need Medicaid, apply for it as soon as you can. And get on the list. Get on the list. Well, the fives, we tell the fives at our office you'll be on the list about six months. And fives are the neediest. Right. If you're a one, we tell you you'll be on the list several years. Yes. So the benefit of maybe, you know, getting your own insurance is that you don't have to be on any list. You know, if you get ill, you just activate that insurance and you can get care at the home. And some of these new products, I'm not familiar with them, and I know that you and I have talked about it a little bit, but I would caution people when you're talking about anything having to do with insurance and annuities, get at least two opinions. Yes. Really. I... And, and also remember, you're paying your money to a company, so you got to make sure the company you're paying is going to be around when you need the help. So deal only with A plus rated companies. All right. And I believe I have, Moody's does the ratings on insurance companies. Okay. Mutual of Omaha has got a good rating, and so does Kanawa. Mm -hmm. So, luckily, that's who our policies are with. But does or is there any comeback, let's say, if a person pays for 20 years into a long-term care policy, and what happens if a company goes out of business? You lose everything. Well, usually you? what happens with an insurance company is when they become insolvent, they go into receivership. And then the state takes them over and has a pool of money which they use they will try and make the uh, policy holders whole, but usually what ends up happening is the policy holders get a reduced benefit. So if they stay with the company? The company doesn't have enough money to pay all its liabilities. So what they do is they offer a cents on the dollar, basically. So instead of maybe paying $200 a day, they'll only pay 100 Wow. Yeah. And that's what happens when they go. And there's been a couple of those long-term 
care company, uh, insurance companies that have gone into receivership because they didn't have a grasp on the cost of long-term care. So that makes it even more important than we, and one of the questions I had here, I said, explain the difference between Medicare and Medicaid and why it's important to know the best tools to use in planning for Medicaid planning, Medicare planning, and estate planning. I just saw a study that came out, and I wish I could remember who the study was, but they polled people who are 55 going into retirement years, yeah. getting close to retiring, and asked them how they would pay for a long-term care event. And did you know 80-something percent of them said they would use Medicare? And it, won't pay something, for... and it does not pay for long-term care. It does pay for a short-term rehab at a nursing home, but it does not pay for long-term. So that just shows you the, the level of misinformation that's out there that, you know, part of what you and I do is try to educate the public and get the word out there that, you know, you can't rely on Medicare to pay these costs. What we are doing with Helping Seniors Now, Bill, is uh, we're, we'll have a meeting of the advocacy group is scheduled in April. And one of our goals, I hope to propose to the uh, advocacy group is that we, on our next survey of the county, we propose using the Space Coast Government TV channel as an elder-friendly community device wherein we do more television shows that will help people understand the perils of Pauline growing older so that we can, by perils of Pauline, I mean, folks, significant events that you don't understand. Just like Bill, no matter how much we talk about it, Bill, you just pointed out that People still don't get still don't get the difference. Idea there's a there is a vast difference between Medicare, Medicaid, what to pay for, who will pay for drugs, right. the drug costs, uh, and the and the downside is you know both Medicaid and also if you're a veteran trying to apply for vet, VA aid and attendance benefits, both of those are means tested. So you know you may not be eligible based on what your assets and income are. Right. And so uh, you may be on your own to pay your own long-term care bills for a while. That means that you actually could take everything that you've worked for to save, and you could you could with the, with the way the the cost of nursing home care now, heaven forbid. I person. just saw the statistic. What, what did you Average think? nationally is $86,700 a year. Uh, the high, I think, was New York City at $145,000 a year for a nursing home. The low was some county in Ohio where it averaged about $72,000. So, it's interesting because in Ohio, they, I, I would like to, I to look at that, get that thing. Did you see it in NALA? I did. I I read a little bit about it. Okay, and you please send it to me because I want to check to see if it's one of the counties in Ohio. Several years ago, eight or nine of the Ohio counties decided they would tax and put an increase a tax on themselves to pay for this kind of care. Okay. So it'd be interesting to see if if this has happened in that county because. They were trying to prepare for the future. And this is something that you and I have, we've talked about it right. in estate planning, financial planning, uh, people understanding just basic, simple things. We go back to protect yourself. How can you protect yourself if you don't understand what you're doing? Correct. You have to educate yourself. You know, right. know what it means to try and qualify for Medicaid, know what it means to go out and buy insurance, know what it means to self-insure, because if you have sufficient assets, you may not have to do either. You may not have to buy insurance, may not have to qualify for Medicaid. You can simply self-insure if you have sufficient assets to pay that, you know, 80-something thousand dollar bill every month. Yeah. 
I and think too many every year. Excuse. Too many senior citizens, Bill, are are um, overly concerned about how much they're going to leave their children in terms of uh, home and possession and financial wealth. Well, yeah. you and me have talked about this at some length about, you know, nowadays people don't have pensions. <laughs> and, right. you know, in the 1980s, 30% of Americans had pensions. Today, only 3%. And uh, everybody thinks the 401k is going to replace the pension. Well, it hasn't worked out that way. And the average 401k has $22,000 in it. Okay, so that's not going to replace a thousand dollar or two thousand dollar a month pension. No, uh, that simply is not going to work. And so the people who are retiring now are reliant ever so much more on their inheritance. And of course, you can only do that for one generation. And then the next generation that comes behind that, that it there's not going to be the inheritance left because the the one generation that relied on it spent it. So it's not going to be passed down again and again. So yeah, a lot of this becomes very critical on how people are going to live in their retirement years. You know, we're going to see a huge growth in the number of seniors who are going to be living purely off of Social Security checks. We, uh, to be honest, we're finding that now and uh, Correct. and caused our, our, our number over at uh, Four seven three seven 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 zero. Folks, if you want to call helping seniors, four seven three seven 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 zero. We'll take the calls, and we try to get. I refer a lot of people to you. Um, I, I do that because um, I think that I, I personally find so many people that have assets that, if they use them the right way, they could live a very enjoyable life in retirement correct but if they don't use their assets the right way they're going to be in trouble right uh too many people i i i too many people people are afraid of the stock market mm -hmm. yet there are people that realize if i don't invest in the stock market or some similar type thing where my cash has a theoretical chance to grow slowly. Yeah, the recent I, uh, you know interest on savings has been nothing. That is it. So it has really punished our senior citizens who rely on safe vehicles for uh, holding their money, and they've gotten very low returns. The you know ever since two thousand eight. So you know here we are some. Eight years later, and their money really hasn't grown at all. Well, when I started investing in the stock market, I was 45 years old. And uh, now at 82, I've seen a, a, a nice growth in my, in my wealth over the years. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not extremely wealthy, but I, I have planned enough Barring a huge unforeseen accident or something that I, I haven't planned for, that I I should be able to take care of myself and my wife. And uh, what, what's the operative word in everything you just said? Plan. Plan. Have to have a plan. So when we're talking about long-term care, you know, really, some you need to get in, see somebody who can flesh out what your plan is going to be. Yeah. Can you afford long-term care insurance or one of these hybrid products? Or are you more inclined that you're going to be qualifying for Medicaid? Or do you have enough assets that you're simply going to self-insure? You know, you need to figure out what your plan is going to be. And we really haven't even touched, this is just on paying long-term care, but we haven't touched on the other end of incapacity, which is making sure you have your decision makers in place so that, How about talking about that just for a minute? Then? Okay, yeah. Uh, if you become incapacitated, you really need to have a what's called the durable the power, power of attorney. attorney. I say that where somebody's you. in place to manage your finances. You need a designation of healthcare surrogate where somebody's in place to make your healthcare decisions for you in the event you can't give informed consent. You need a living will, what your end of life decisions are going to be, whether or not you want life support continued 
if you're in a terminal condition, an end stage condition, or a persistent vegetative state, whether or not you want a feeding tube. And you do those documents so that if and when you become incapacitated, then your decision makers are there and they can just step right up. If you don't do those documents, and we need to get decision makers in place to access monies to pay for your care, you may be stuck doing a guardianship. And uh, guardianship, if you don't have to do it, don't go there. Because it's very and expensive, expensive. And if it becomes contested, it becomes even more expensive. You're going to have to meet to one of your seminars someday. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very proud of the fact, Bill, that I've had the association with you that I've had on the radio, the printed media, and on television, because I think, I think you, our viewing audience, has learned tremendously from what Bill has given out over the television shows and everything we've archived on uh, helping seniors of Bavara.org. Everything we talk about, Bill, is archived. People can read it, they can send a link to their children, their grandchildren, and they can say, hey, these two guys are talking about this stuff. Don't make the mistakes that they're talking about. Um, I could say it over and over and over again. And I, I've i got almost every show that you and I have done, I've got a book full of these shows over the years. And I could go back and I could probably take three shows and keep doing those three shows and keep getting something different each time. Right. Because what I might say will trigger a thought from you. What you say triggers a thought from me. Because we know that what we say is extremely important. And I, I, I cannot, I just can't emphasize enough the business about Medicare planning, Medicaid planning, and estate planning. Right. It's extremely important. Correct. Just, nothing is so important. And I don't care if you've got a $50,000 estate or a $55 million estate. Planning becomes important. Yes, yeah. yes, it really does. Um, a question I've always, and I've asked you this one before, because you send me the National Association of Elder Law Attorney News and uh, our, 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 their, their bulletin, their hotline, every week. I read it, and there was a huge article in there recently about something that's going to happen in, in April, on April 29th of 2016. And some people reading the show will, will see it. It's after it's happened, they'll see it. But it's a change to our, our way of life and our planning for the future that most people don't know about. They're gonna make changes, they may change under the Affordable Health Care Act. If they repeal the whole Affordable Health Care Act, would a new president, would all these things that have been put in place by the current president, if it's repealed, would those things become not binding? It all depends on what uh, the, the Congress does. The Congress would have to actually repeal the law, and then the president would have to sign that into law. And it's been around now for quite a long time. I know. It's I know. been around eight years. Well, yeah, six, six years. Six years. Six or seven. Uh, so, you know, once those things get ingrained, they're very hard to undo. But the thing is, Bill, there's still more of those things being enacted now in 2016, some in 2017, and 2018. Correct. Up until 2020. It has so different, things, yeah, different, yeah, different dates. Well, yeah. So, uh, some of what's happened on the Affordable Care Act has been good. I won't say it's been magnificent. I still run across people all the time that have no insurance. We just talked to a paraplegic woman uh, uh, recently that uh, can't afford insurance, can't get it under the Affordable Care Act. It would not insure her. And, uh, you know, what do you tell people like that? Well, there shouldn't be any pre existing conditions. So. I know there's not supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure why they would not insure her. We're looking into it. You may now, get a call. It may be that she doesn't qualify for the government subsidy. That's based on what your income is. And, uh, you know, they compute your income. 
No, she, she's, she's, she's a paraplegic, paraplegic. She's had uh, breast cancer surgery, and now she needs a hysterectomy. And um, she called to see if we could help her. She was in tears. Uh, it upset our office worker, and they called me, and uh, we're do, we're looking into it. And, and I, 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 we just got it. It's just something. That's the kind of case we get. And right. No one else wants to touch these kind of things. These poor people, they they call people and they get no sense of direction. They get nobody to help them. This is why I feel that uh, what Helping Seniors does is so important because I, I call your paralegals all the time and get get an idea of where to go for help. Right. Uh, so, in terms of protecting yourself. Uh, you, you you use the word durable power of attorney. That right. that's one document of all the documents we have in, in case of incapacitation. If you got that thing in in place, you are protecting your family. Correct, and that allows somebody to basically manage all your finances. Durable means it survives your incapacity. You nominate somebody in the document, and then they can go about paying your bills managing your assets, applying for public benefits, signing tax returns, whatever is needed to be done uh, with regard to your finances. So if people take nothing away from this show today, go to a reputable attorney and get a durable power of attorney, but in place don't go to Office Depot and take one. Correct. Off I just saw some uh, computer generated forms that were wholly inadequate. They're and not. I'm they're not, not going to say who who they were, but you know, you just can't trust a lot of what you get on the internet. Yeah, you got to be real careful. Bill, I want to thank you for doing this show. Today. I appreciate it, and I thank you, viewer, for watching today's episode of Helping Seniors. I hope you've learned something. I'm Joe Stackler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Burrard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses, and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You're always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.